Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Pen Habit. My name's Matt. Glad to have you here for this review. Now, one of the things I have reviewed several times in the past have been custom pens from custom pen makers. And those are always fun to review. They're a little difficult to review too because they're custom. So how do you really review them? No two, pen is, no two pens are going to be exactly the same. So as I've talked about before, in my mind, when looking at custom pens, what you want to look at is the quality of construction. That's the most important thing. Then start to take a look at some of the aesthetics of the pen maker. Maybe one pen maker's aesthetics kind of fit more closely with your own. Uh, maybe they do something a little different that other pen makers don't do. And maybe they have some, some consistent standards across their models that are specific to the way you like to use your pens. And that is that last one is the case, I think, with the pen maker for today's review. So the pens for today's review come from Fisher of Pens. Now, Fisher of Pens is run by a gentleman named Carl Fisher. I met him at the DC show in 2016, which is where I found this pen. This is a modified version of his Apollo fountain pen model. And I'll talk about why this is modified in just a second. But this is made of a vintage lizard skin green celluloid and ebonite. It's got this lovely art deco style clip, flat ends, etc. I, I went by his table. I met him first on Friday, Thursday night at the bar, I think, actually. And then I met him again on Friday, uh, saw his pens. And then I purposely held off and didn't buy anything until Sunday. The main reason being, you know, I, I know a lot of these folks. If I see something I like, I know it can always go in order. But when they're at a show, a lot of times I don't like to steal their inventory, or not steal, but buy their inventory right up front in case there are other people who wouldn't feel as comfortable ordering from them after the fact. So that's why I waited until Sunday. When I went back on Sunday, this pen was still there, and I loved this lizard skin celluloid. Stuff like this is very hard to find anymore, and so I decided to snap up the pen. When I purchased the pen, Carl said, I'm a little hesitant to have you review this pen because if you do, people are going to be contacting me asking me if I can make them a pen from the same materials. And I can't because this celluloid is very difficult to come by. This was the last of what he had and finding it is next to impossible anymore. So he said, let me send you another pen that is kind of the standard model that is made of a material that I have access to. And so you can give your viewers an example of what a standard version of this looks like that isn't made from a, a, a one-off vintage material. And then you can keep it or give it away or whatever you want to do. And I said, well, I'll give it away because I love giving stuff away. So that is how I got a hold of this Apollo. So this is the Apollo. It's a beta version that he's trying to come up with the best ways to tackle. This is called the Dragon Yin Yang slides out here, got a little foam protector, and then on the inside you come to this pen. Now this is the kind of traditional version uh, of the Apollo. This version of the Apollo has some slight differences to it, and I can point them out. Uh, I believe these changes were made mainly because he wanted to highlight the vintage aspects of the pen. So it's flat tops, it's a little less rounded around the, or you know, little less curvilinear along the cap, and it's a little narrower, and that largely has to do with the diameter of the blank from which this was turned. So this is kind of a modified Apollo with a more vintage look. This is kind of the traditional Apollo here, and I'm actually going to move this out of the way a little bit because I think it'll make it easier to see. So this is the Apollo. It is made of this beautiful kind of frosty clear white and black swirled material has this very ice feel to it, icy feel to it. It's, it's really quite a lovely material. It's not that crystal clear acrylic you see like the water acrylics you've seen. It, this is a slightly frostier feel and it has a real nice feel to it. This is a, a, a resin. It's a two-part resin. It's got this springy clip. Now the clip is pretty standard. It's a folded metal clip and it's, you know, nothing special. Rounded tops here, a slight step between the cap and the barrel. Again, a slight bulge to the barrel and then rounded a domed end here. And it's just really, really nicely polished, very smooth. Uh, the cap comes off with one, two and a half turns. 
And this is where the pen starts to get a little bit interesting and where the dragon and yin yang come from here. So this, the section is made out of another resin or acrylic, I believe, kind of an orangey red swirled with black. Really, I'm, and now I'm going to bring this back in the picture so you can see the offset there. Very neat material and kind of a nice offset from the icy material that is used to make the barrel of the pen. And one thing I forgot to mention on the barrel, it may be hard to see, I'll try to grab it in the photos. The, the company name Fisher of Pens is laser etched on the barrel of the pen right there. One of the things I found interesting about a lot of Carl's pens is that the sections on his pens are, are pretty narrow. And I've heard from a lot of people who say, hey, I'd love to get a custom pen, but a lot of the custom pen makers, their pens are so big. They're just really large. And I think some of that has to, co- has to do with a design decision, but I also think a lot of it has to do with, it can be very difficult to get super narrow, super thin walls on these materials when you're turning them by hand. So if you look at a lot of the Indian made pens out of ebonite, for instance, they're big, giant, chunky things, as opposed to something that is a little bit more slender, a little bit more refined. This has a pretty refined feel to it, and it's a nice slender section. So the the section on this is just uh, 10 millimeters, which is quite a bit narrower than a lot of pens, and certainly narrower than a lot of custom made pens. Then you've got the threads here. The threads are not sharp at all, but there is a, a pretty drastic step up between the cap and the barrel here. It's, I mean, it's, I don't hold it this far back because the section's nice and long. So I'm able to hold it right on the section and my, my fingers don't touch either the threads or the step up with, with any issues there. It's long enough I can use it unposted. It doesn't really post. It's not really designed to post. You can kind of rest it on there, but that's not how the pen was designed. So this is a pen that is kind of designed to be used unposted. It's a cartridge converter filled pen, uses a Schmidt converter, and the threads here on the tenon are nice and deep. So, and there's a lot of them. So if you wanted to eyedropper this, you could. This is a pen that would actually, I think, look really, really neat eyedropper because you've got this translucence in the material through which the ink would show, but it's not completely clear. It also isn't colored. So whatever color you put in the barrel of the, of the pen is the color you're going to see, but it's not going to be like just a plain clear demonstrator. It's got a little bit more visual interest than that. The nib is a number six Yovo nib. I believe Carl told me that he gets his nibs from fpnibs.com. And this one came with just a steel medium nib. It's a very, very nice steel nib, nice and smooth. I believe Carl does a little bit of work on his nibs to get them the way you'd like them, but this one is is nice and smooth, writes really, really well, and I have been really happy with it up to this point. Now, as I said at the beginning of the review, one of the keys to knowing how good a custom pen is is the quality of construction, and this is as good as any custom pen that I have gotten up to this point. It's The material has a slightly textured feel because it doesn't get that super clear, water clear finish to it. It feels just slightly, not sandblasted, but almost matte. It's really a nice feel in the hands. It reminds me a lot of ebonite, honestly, the way it feels. It's not quite like your regular acrylics or resins, and I like that a lot. It's, like I said, beautifully polished, nice and smooth, very well turned. The threads are nice and smooth and tight. There's no slack in them. And these, this pen also does that thing where the last kind of quarter turn really tightens the pen down. So it's not going to accidentally come loose in your pocket or in a bag or in a pen case or something like that. It, it's nice and secure and tight, but not so much so that you have to crank it to open it back up again. So all in all, I have been really, really impressed with this pen. Now, I'll talk very quickly about the lizard skin version of the pen. Even though you can't get it, I'll just show you a couple of differences and and talk to you a little bit about it. So as I mentioned earlier, it's got these nice flat tops and bottom. The finials are made out of this uh, really nice black ebonite. You've got this beautiful lizard skin celluloid. And from what I understand, this particular kind of celluloid is made in sheets and then rolled around a mandrel and then turned. And it's, it's a neat, 
neat look. It's something you don't see a lot anymore because it's just not made anymore. You've got the same sort of longer section, this time in black ebonite, and then uh, a two-tone steel nib in this particular case with a little bit of dog hair on it. It's amazing how the dog hair gets everywhere in your house. I love my dog, but there are days I wish I could just shave him bald. Uh, I would never do that. I just wish I could. This uh, also a very nice nib. This nib has just a little bit more of a pencil-like feedback to it, which is also nice. I think I'm probably going to end up replacing this with a gold nib at some point. I really do like the the feel of the pen though. It fits nicely in the hand. It's very well balanced. This one does post a little bit more securely, but not significantly. And it not very deeply either. So it still has all the same quality characteristics, very nicely made, nice joins, very smooth, beautiful polish, tight threads. So I'm, I've been really happy with this one. This one's mine to keep because I paid for it with my own money, but this one I'm going to be giving away on penhabit.com. So let's go ahead, do some measurements, and then I will show you how this thing writes. These Fisher of Pens Apollos are interesting pens for me because as I've talked about in a lot of my videos, I tend to prefer pens with a slightly broader grip, something closer to the 11, 12, even 13 millimeter range, I find more comfortable. So the narrower pens, I tend to get a little too steel claw on. I just tend to grip them too hard. These pens, the, the shape of the section is really nice. 
and very comfortable in the hand, but I still find myself getting a little too steel, steel claw grippy with them. They, they tend to, because the section is just that little bit narrower and the way I hold my pens, I tend to, to get just a tiny little bit of a cramp. Now, if you're used to pens with a smaller diameter or prefer them, I think these pens are going to be right up your alley especially because they are so lightweight that you get the, the niceness of that slender feel with a really lightweight pen. And I think they would allow you for nice long writing sessions. Now, this particular pen has, a, I would say the steel nib that it came with is probably about a two and a half to a three on the feedback scale, where one is no feedback and 10 is more feedback than a human could possibly stand. It's pretty much in keeping with the diameter you might expect for a Yovo number no. six medium nib. It's wet, but not ridiculously so. It's actually a little bit on the wetter side than normal right now because I just barely inked the pen. But, uh, you know, it's it's got some decent wetness to it. it. It's very smooth, but it's not so smooth that it feels like it's just, you know, slipping right off the paper. Nice round nib. It seems to be very good at either higher angles or lower angles. It has been really no problems with ink starvation, no problems with hard starting or skipping, no baby's bottom that I have been able to detect. It just kind of floats right across the paper just with just enough, enough friction to let you know that it is there. It's really quite nice. In reverse writing, It works. It's really pretty scratchy, very dry, extra, extra fine, but you know, usable if you had to in a pinch. And that is that. Now, really quickly, I will pull up the other pen, the, the lizard skin celluloid, just to show you. This one is, is a little bit more feedback prone. It's also just a touch wetter. Um, I, it feels a touch wetter. This is Monteverde Green, in case anyone is interested. Monteverde just came out with their new ink line at the end of 2016, and these are a couple of samples that Van Ness Pen Company sent over. I've been trying them out. I think there's 20 or 24 in this line, and so I've been, I've been playing around with them, and some of them I really like so far. This Mandarin Orange is, is one of my favorites, I think. But this green is also a really nice green, gets some nice sheen to it. So yeah, this writes as well. I have the same experience with this one in terms of writing consistency and performance that I did on the other one with the slight difference that this has a lightly more feedback heavy. I'd say this is probably a four to four and a half on the feedback scale. So this is more in keeping with what I might expect from a Sailor or an Aurora than from most of the Yovo nibs that I have tried. It's not to the point of being unpleasant, but if there were much more feedback, it pretty it would be. So as this is my pen to keep, I suspect I will either smooth the nib out or get a gold nib to replace it, because you know me and my, my bouncy gold nibs, I do enjoy those quite a bit. Uh, but overall, I've been really impressed with the way these write. I This is one of those where if I, if I could do anything I wanted to the pen, this particular pen, the, the green lizard skin one, I would probably ask for the section to be made a little bit thicker. Now that may not be possible with this particular material simply because the material, these, these celluloid rods often are quite a bit skinnier than the, the blanks used for modern pens, but I don't know that for sure. So if I were ordering one, I'd say, hey, give me 11 and a half millimeters as a section width. And I think 11 and a half to 12, I think that would probably be closer to what I would be looking for. It is very difficult to cost custom pens because obviously the materials you use, the nib you pick, the design you want, the complexity of accents and things like that all come into play. If memory serves me correct, this particular one sold at the show for around $275. I checked on the Fisher of Pens website and the base price for most of Carl's pens starts at, if memory serves, around $225. There are additions for nibs, and again, you want to upgrade to a gold nib, you want unusual materials, vintage materials, unusual designs. The price would go up from there. That's, that's 
very close in keeping with what a lot of the other custom pen makers are charging. And quite frankly, I find Carl's work to be up there with any of the other ones that I have reviewed and really liked, particularly, you know, Jonathan Brooks's work or Renee Meeks from Scriptorium Pens. I feel like his work is just as good as any of those, those uh, pen, well-known pen makers, Sean Newton as well. So yeah, I really like the pen. I am very grateful to Carl for allowing me to do a giveaway of this lovely Dragon Yin Yang Beta version of his pen. So keep an eye out on penhabit.com for when that's coming up. And uh, thank you for letting me purchase this from you at the show. I do appreciate it, Carl. So, and thank you to watching. I really do appreciate you guys as well. Hope you enjoy this holiday season and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.